Thank you very much, General Saltzman. Uh, before I begin the questioning, there are a series of uh, standard questions for nominees, and you can respond. Uh, have you adhered to applicable laws and regulations governing conflicts of interest? Yes. Have you assumed any duties or taken any actions that would appear to presume the outcome of the confirmation process? No. Exercising our legislative and oversight responsibilities makes it important that this committee, its subcommittees, and other appropriate committees of Congress receive testimony, briefings, reports, records, and other information from the executive branch on a timely basis. Do you agree, if confirmed, to appear and testify before this committee when requested? Yes. Do you agree when asked before this committee to give your personal views, even if your views differ from the administration? Yes. Do you agree to provide records, documents, and electronic communications in a timely manner when requested by this committee, its subcommittees, or other appropriate committees of Congress, and to consult with the requester regarding the basis for any good faith delay or denial in providing such records? Yes. Will you ensure that your staff complies with deadlines established by this committee for the production of reports, records, and other information, including timely responding to hearing questions for the record? Yes. Will you cooperate in providing witnesses and briefings in response to congressional requests? Yes. Will those witnesses and briefings be protected from reprisal for their testimony or briefings? Yes. Thank you very much, General. General, uh, in my comments, I talked about uh, the force design that the Space Force must uh, lead. Uh, the intent in Congress is to, to centralize that force design in the Space uh, Force. And the Senate version of the 2022 National Defense Authorization Act deemed the Chief of Space Operations to be the force design architect for space of the armed services. I know different in many ways of how the Chief of Naval Operations is the designer of the fleet of ships for our Navy. The conference bill required the Secretary of Defense to designate the Chief of Special Operations as the force design architect. And the August 17th letter sent to the committee by the Secretary does indeed designate the chief as the force design architect, except for all of the other authorities of space residing in the armed forces and the Office of Secretary of Defense, which are rather extensive. Do you think this is a workable uh, designation uh, and follows the intent of Congress? Yes, sir, I do. I've had uh, extensive discussions with Secretary of the Air Force and General Raymond, the current chief of space operations, uh, and it's my understanding that the uh, ex exemptions that you mention uh, really are not about authorities associated with the force design architect and that the authorities and responsibilities this, that the Secretary of Defense gave to General Raymond as the Chief of Space Operations uh, is sufficient to accomplish the intent of Congress. Uh, and if confirmed, I would uh, continue to execute those same authorities and responsibilities so that I could take seriously those priorities for force design to make the Space Force as capable as possible. Thank you. Uh, General Saltzman, if confirmed, your job will be to present trained and equipped forces to U.S. Space Command primarily, but also you will have the duty to support other combatant commands such as UCOM, et cetera. Uh, is there any significant distinction in your mind between your responsibilities uh, between those two uh, or, or the different commands you will support? No, Senator. The uh the responsibilities of the Chief of Space Operations are to make sure there are ready forces that have the flexibility, the agility, the training and experience necessary to support all combatant commanders. Of note, of course, is that U.S. Space Command has primary res responsibilities for that space area of, uh, area of responsibilities, as well as some key missions uh, providing capabilities for the joint force. And so while over 90% of the Space Force capabilities are presented to U.S. Space Command, there are critical other capabilities, regional capabilities, that are also presented to the other combatant commands to fulfill their missions as well. Thank you. Uh, General Salzman, uh, the administration has sent a legislative proposal to, to create essentially full and part-time Space Force military personnel in lieu of a separate reserve and guard elements as in other services. And this, I think, originates because the Space Force is relatively small and the reserve and guard elements would be smaller still. Uh, do you support this proposal? 
Senator, the most important aspect of this is that there are critical capabilities and expertise that currently reside in the Air Force Reserves as well as the Air National Guard. Uh, the primary responsibility, of course, is to make sure that we have complete access to that experience, that expertise, and those capabilities. So from a readiness perspective, I can tell you as the Chief of Operations currently, um, that's high on my list to make sure that we have unfettered access to those capabilities. We're also looking at, at flexible and, and innovative ways to make sure that we have viable and flexible career paths for our guardians. It's important that we retain this talent for an extended period of time to get the most out of them. And having the ability to seamlessly and have a permeable way to move between full-time and part-time capacity inside the Space Force, we think is, is a tremendous benefit to the Guardians uh, and ultimately to the Force to maintain that readiness. So if confirmed as CSO, I would, I would certainly welcome the opportunity to continue to work with members of this committee and other stakeholders to make sure that we get the right organizational structure to take advantage of these capabilities. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, one of the, the, the great challenges you have facing you is uh, creating a culture uh, in the Space Force uh, as a warfighting uh, force, um, one that's highly technical uh, and one that uh, innovates constantly. And, and we find sometimes culture is more determinative of outcomes than a lot of other factors. So. Uh, that's something I think you'll be working on, and we hope to work together with you. Thank you very much. Now let me 